lovely audience. Uh, my name is Juliette Burton, and I am actually a comedian. Uh, so this is what I do for a living as well. And I don't know if you can tell by my accent, but I have mental health conditions. <laughs> and I've been in therapy for well over half my life. And yes, thank you. I have just received my Duke of Edinburgh Award for <laughs> services in psychiatry. <laughs> And yes, I've got so many different mental health conditions. So I feel like I feel like you're a lovely audience. So I'm going to trust you. I'm going to tell you all of my mental health conditions. So, uh, lovely BBC audience, I've been diagnosed with anorexia, anxiety disorder, bipolar disorder, body dysmorphic disorder, bulimia, compulsive overeating disorder, depression, and completing this list, which, because of this final condition, has to be organized alphabetically, <laughs> I also have obsessive compulsive disorder. <laughs> oh, fans of obsessive compulsive disorder in tonight. OCD, OCD, OCD. They've got to say it three times. <laughs> now, of all of my labels, the one that fits me the best is eating disorders and I've uh, actually gotten some, some scrapes because of my eating disorders in the past so um, when I was 17 I was sectioned under the Mental Health Act because I was a month away from dying of anorexia some of you are looking a little bit understandably worried in the audience right now so let me reassure you okay Spoiler alert! <laughs> so uh, now after that, I went in and out of hospital quite a lot due to anorexia. I then went from a size 4 to a size 20 in around six months due to compulsive overeating disorder. And then I spent the best part of a decade being bulimic. I am Mary Berry's worst nightmare. <laughs> now, I've actually encountered quite a few incidents of uh, some kind of ignorance, especially when I come off stage. Uh, and I, that's totally understandable because a lot of people seem to misunderstand the fact that just because I look healthy and well and, and for want of a better word, normal, whatever that is, I'm not normal, there's no such thing. I, uh, just because I look standard, you know, um, then I'm not really dealing with anything on the inside. But the thing is, my conditions, they're invisible. And uh, you never really know what somebody else is going through, especially with mental health. I once had this guy come up to me after one of my shows. It was a show about body confidence, a comedy show. He came up to me and said, oh, mental health conditions? No, they're not an illness. They're an attention-seeking ploy. <laughs> and these sorts of interactions, they're very awkward to deal with. And I thought about, for, at the beginning of my career, not talking about my mental health conditions on stage to avoid these sorts of interactions. I thought, I, I thought about ignoring them. But then I realised that ignoring something doesn't make it go away. I tried that with my tax return. <laughs> True story. And uh, yes, I also did stop talking about them because I ended up feeling awkward about myself when these people were that ignorant and awkward about my conditions, debilitatingly so. But then I realised that I could get quite a few very good comedy routines out of it, especially with people who troll me on Twitter. Uh, so I do get trolled quite a lot, uh, mainly because I talk openly about my mental health conditions, but also because I have that other condition that does seem to en uh, encourage some kind of ignorance and a lot of unnecessary rage, uh, and that is called feminism. So I am a feminist, and a couple of years ago I, uh, I got trolled a lot because I objected to this Beach Body Ready advert in London. It was bright yellow. I objected to it because it was sexist to me, and I thought it wasn't very good for our mental health. So one particular troll, uh, he trolled me saying, um, oh, you wouldn't be wasting your time fighting over something you could easily ignore if you didn't grow up to be such an ugly... And then he used a four-letter swear word beginning with F. And the most upsetting thing about that tweet was the fact that he spelt the, that four-letter swear word wrong. <laughs> I mean, how? How? So, yes, another troll uh, said, um, oh, silly social justice warriors getting their knickers in a twist because they're all such fat chicks. Now, a lot of people on Twitter in this storm uh, were called fats, whether they were a size 6, 16, or 26. So I now think that the word fat means woman with an opinion. <laughs> and another lovely troll, uh, he said, uh, that, oh, this is a great one, we say, he said, <clears throat> oh, stupid feminists getting salt in their vaginas because they'll never look as good as the model in the advert. <laughs> I had no idea we were meant to put seasoning down there. <laughs> oh, madam, would you like some black pepper? <laughs> they started moving on from these trolls, moving on from the feminist attacks to attacking me about my mental health. Uh, so I was called a mad harpy, uh, a crazy person, um, either get off your ass or get some meds. 
which is very odd because I have never ridden a donkey. <laughs> Being open about my mental health conditions means that I'm open to these kinds of attacks. And that's kind of a way that made me think that I shouldn't be talking about it on stage. I shouldn't be talking about it on stage. I shouldn't be talking about it maybe in real life and in conversation. And it got quite nasty. Um, there were a couple of trolls who said things like, I was clawing my way to social media fame. And one particular guy, uh, he said that, um, anorexic? Sure she's starving for attention. I know, look, I know, that is absolutely insensitive and very mean, but looking at it objectively, okay, he's got the basis for a really good joke there. <laughs> I mean, credit where credit is due. I did think long and hard about not opening up anymore on stage or in conversation or in the media about my mental health, but then I realised how passionate I am about doing that. Because comedy is the perfect place to talk about mental health. If we're laughing about something, then we'd feel less alone with it. If we're laughing about something, it loses its power to scare us. Look, I'm never going to stop talking about mental health in my comedy routines, because partly it's important partly because it's really good for me, and partly because, well, with ignorance like that out there, I keep getting given free material. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Juliet Burton. Thank you so much, lovely BBC audience. I'll see you soon. <laughs>